Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sather, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. I am your host, Armand Head Honcho, Vegan Chorizo Papi, the founder of BNB. Do I have to hype it up? Do I have to say what this is? I have another fantastic WWE interview for you all. I spoke to none other than Becky Balboa, big time Bex, the man, the Irish last kicker, Becky Lynch, who is dropping her upcoming book. Uh, Becky Lynch, the man, not your average, average girl on March 26th. So, of course, we talked about the whole book writing process. We talked about her upcoming WrestleMania match with Rhea Ripley for the WWE Women's World Championship. We talked about some of her favorite moments throughout her career. We talked about her husband, Seth freaking Rollins, whose name I messed up a few times in the interview, but I corrected myself. We just had a really great time. It was easily one of the most engaging conversations that I had and with Becky being one of my all-time favorite women it's it's just such a milestone for me so I hope that you all enjoy the conversation as much as I enjoyed it the next voices that you will hear are mine and Becky Lynch Becky Lynch wow this is uh this is a a momentous occasion for me you are Big time Bex, the Irish last kicker, Becky Balboa, the man, you are all of these things. And um, I, I now you're about to be an author, too. So I, I think it's just perfect to start. Like, how do you feel going into people uh, about to read words that you've written about yourself, you telling your story, all of the ups and the downs. We are 11 days away from the book coming out. So how, how does it feel knowing that people are about oh, to get yeah. that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, maybe a tiny bit nervous, you know, like I think when you're putting yourself out there in, in that way, you're, you're trying, you're a first time author, you don't know how it's going to be received. Um, it's a little nerve wracking, but, but I'm excited. I put a lot of work into this book. I think I made a, a story that's compelling and hopefully that people can can get some hope out of and uh, some relatability uh, out of too. You know, I, 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 I try to be as, as real and honest as possible. So, um, yeah, excited, excited. I think excited. Good. Excited Good. more than nervous. <laughs> And I, I know you've been working on the book for, for some years now. Um, what was that? Take me back to that moment where you decided I need to write this story about myself. I feel like people need to see this. Like, did you remember that exact moment? I feel like that, that moment has been like bubbling since I was a little kid. Like I, my dad was always on me for writing. Like he was always, talking about writing a book one day and this was before I'd done anything in my life you know this is when mm -hmm. I was like five <laughs> this is when <laughs> I was just eating sweets and playing with Polly Pockets you know and uh, and and then when I discovered wrestling and I became such a big fan of Mick Foley and he had written his book so I wanted to write my book and then after Wrestlemania 35 I got offered a book deal and so then it was like, all right, well, here we go. This is what I've always wanted to do. Now it's in my now it's in my lap. And then, you know, it took a long time before I even got around to sitting down and, and writing because we were so busy at the time. Of course, this was before I had a child. So I didn't <laughs> realize that I actually wasn't that busy. Uh, now I know what busyness is about. And so uh, it's been a process. And I did a year long writing course to to try and understand how to write a book, how to uh, how to do a long form story like that, or, which is wild when it when it's just your biography, when you're just telling the story of your life, but how to make it interesting and engaging, and uh, and then and then I had written something that I had sent to my editor that I had also sent to Mick Foley. Mick Foley went through um, my book. We spent about six hours on the phone one day just uh going page by page through the book and then my re editor came back with a bunch of notes and then i almost rewrote the entire book in about five weeks while <laughs> i was also uh on multiple shows 
I was uh, I was the NXT Women's Champion at that time, and so a lot of this book got written on airplanes and in hotel rooms. Wow. What is as what ha, have there been any moments throughout writing this book, and as you reflect on your entire life, like have there been any moments where you've just been like brought to tears or just gotten emotional reflecting on something specific that's happened? Well, anytime I talk about my dad or think about my dad or read that section or write that section, um, I, I just become a, 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 a blubbering mess. Um, it's just, it's, it's still very, very raw and, and, and hard to, um, hard, hard to, hard to, hard to talk about. Um, hard to write about, hard to read about. And, uh, and especially because, you know, I have, I have a, a lot of guilt and um, a lot of remorse over, well, one, just not even being there for when my dad passed away, but, you know, not f- feeling like I, I wish I'd gotten to talk to him more and all those things. So, that, so that's probably the hardest part of the book. Right. For me. Yeah. No, completely. <laughs> Um, what's, what's been like the, the biggest, biggest lesson that you've learned in writing a book? Because I think, I think people will just look at it as like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to write this story about myself and, and then I'm going to put it out to the world. But there's a lot of different processes. And as you said, like, you know, getting a book deal and editors and all that. So what's been like the biggest lesson in terms of just actually writing a book that you've learned, maybe something that you weren't aware of going into it. Uh, I don't, I don't know if there's anything like one thing that I could say that is like the thing. I think the the thing with writing a book is to write a book. <laughs> you know, that sounds so obvious, but I think it's just like, like the pitfalls that I would come to was like, I would come to something say difficult to talk about or that I wasn't sure if I wanted to talk about and I would just go away and I'd go away and I'd leave it and then I'd you know wait for months until I felt like coming back to it and I think that's that's probably the biggest pitfall people fall into is not writing when they're supposed to be Mm. writing and so that's it I think it's it's kind of doing things when you don't feel like it or doing hard things um, and just getting stuff down on paper because it doesn't have to go into the world. You can always change it and you can always uh, chop it back. I think, I think overwriting is, um, is the thing that you need in the beginning to, to get to a place where, where you're happy because you can always take stuff out and you can always, uh, reduce but i think if you just don't have the words on the paper that becomes the biggest obstacle (laughs) seems very very obvious but like i mean how many people are there out there that want to write a book but just or or a screenplay or whatever but just don't do it because they get in their own way like as if there's some external judge judging you the greatest thing about that process especially the early process is that nobody's reading it except you. So you're the only person judging yourself. The, the, the title of the book, Becky Lynch, the man, not your average, average girl. How did you arrive at that title? Well, what does that title mean to you? I feel like it captures so much in using your, your nickname from the WWE, but then calling yourself not your average, average girl. Yeah, I think so. So the man is is obvious. It's my moniker in WWE, but it's also um, it's also a, a statement of empowerment, right? Like that that for so long in in sports, in media, in history, the top guy has always been called the man. And now I am the top guy um, Mm -hmm. and have been the top guy. And then the not your average, average girl is that I was so absurdly average. You know, there's some people that are born with with a certain thing about them. You know, they have a look. They have. I I just didn't have that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I just didn't have that. I was just so perfectly average, perfectly average in school. Just nothing remarkable about me. 
but I had this dream and I had a want and I had uh, a determination to make something of myself and was able to come over to what had been a previously male dominated sport and become the face of that industry. And so Mm -hmm. I was able to do some very on average things as this average girl uh, (laughs) from Ireland. And so I think that's a that's a story worth telling because yeah. when most of the time when you're reading about uh, people that you you may admire or that you see on TV, you you think of them as um, as stars, as 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 people that that are uh, remarkable, and I kind of just wanted to to bring it down to earth for a second. And be like, here is the human experience. Here is what the people that are on top, here is their internal dialogue. And so I just tried to be very, very honest about that because I think it's quite universal. I Mm -hmm. think I think most people and, and more often than not, I think the people that we see on top have these voices maybe more than anybody. And I think it's a it's a matter of 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 shutting those out and carrying on regardless so i just wanted to be extremely honest in 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 all the internal dialogue that goes on in my head absolutely and and honesty the want you talked about the passion i i I think i think that i would a lot of people would agree in me saying that you are one of the most authentic feeling superstars on TV and WWE and just in pre- professional wrestling in general, when we hear you talk on the mic, your p- recent promos with Rhea Ripley, um, it, it, there's just this, this very palpable, relatable feeling that we can all go through, even myself not being an, an Irish woman. <laughs> I, I still feel like I can, I can relate to you. Um, and 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 you're really bringing that energy going into this this match with Rhea Ripley. You've main events at WrestleMania before. You've had big WrestleMania matches. We are we're coming up on five years ever since you were one of the first women to main event WrestleMania and win it. Well, what does this upcoming match with Rhea Ripley mean to you? Well, it's uh, it 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 feels very uh, just poetic in in that in that the book is coming out. I will have a book style entrance, which I'm very excited about. And it's the story of my life. And I feel like this is the culmination of it, right? Like, like right. somehow in all of this, despite what I have done in the industry, and um, despite being the backbone of the women's in uh, women's division for the last year, and um, being a catalyst for change, somehow i am still uh overlooked and looked at as the underdog mm. and this is where i thrive is where people doubt me where people don't think i can do it um and uh and and it's 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 proving people wrong i said it in uh in in the promo the other day is that i'm good when people believe in me but when people doubt me i'm great and that is mm-hmm. very true and that's how i feel is that when I have that chip on my shoulder, when I have something to fight against, um, it, it feels like m- me against the world and the world don't stand a chance. And, and, and so I think that ties in perfectly with, with the book and, and with the story of my life. Mm-hmm. You you put your husband Seth Rollins Seth freaking Rollins sorry on the hot seat <laughs> <laughs> when you did Hot Ones versus and made him uh, he he didn't do it but you asked him to say three positive things about CM Punk so I'm gonna put you in a similar position and ask you to say three positive things about Rhea Ripley sorry I, I don't have any hot wings to offer you as an alternative so you might just have to do this <laughs> I just have to do this well look I'm not gonna. Uh... There is a lot of good things to say about about Rhea Ripley. She she's got a natural presence about her. She has a um a, a natural ability in the ring, and uh, she's jacked out of her mind. So that's three things. That's three <laughs> things. But at the end of the day, she's she spends more time posting on Instagram and hovering around uh hovering around the lads in the judgment day than she spends fighting in the ring. And uh 
well, I'm just the opposite of that. I, mm. I, I'm about the work and I get the work done. And, uh, and I've changed the game time and time again. So, so she can be this natural superstar that's pushed to the moon. And I can be the one that's always on the back burner. But we've seen how that's worked out in the past. You are you are indeed the man among the women, and um, you you, sp- you spoke about being NXT Women's Champion a, a, a bit earlier, and I and a lot of people that I spoke with really enjoyed that NXT run that you had. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of different superstars who are on the main roster go down to NXT and they become mainstays there. But I think your return to where you you know grew and blossomed was easily one of the most enjoyable what what was that time like for you i mean the interactions with roxanne perez um working with lyra valkyria the matches with tiffany strat and there was just there was so much to be excited about well what was that time like for you oh it was great it was great because i uh i always associated my time in nxt with um being on the chopping block and almost being fired and so to go down there <laughs> and for the first time feel like, all right, they're probably not going to fire me. Um, and uh, and but but more than that is 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 that I have gotten all this experience over the last, you know, whatever it had been like nine years since I had been in NXT as a mainstay. And I had uh, I had gotten to main event many many pay-per-views main main event wrestlemania main event co- countless amounts of house shows and raws and these girls haven't gotten to work with anybody with any of that experience and so to be able to go down there impart my little bits of wisdom <laughs> that i've acquired <laughs> over the last decade and uh and 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 show them what it's like to be in the ring with with somebody who's been to these places and and how that works i think i think is very important and i think a lot of people learned uh a lot and it showed them you know where they want to go and where they need to go and um what goes into all of that stuff and it's the it's the little things that you may not know or think about until you are in the ring with somebody who has all that experience. Mm. Absolutely. I, I've got, I've got to ask, you know, you've got a big WrestleMania match coming up with Ray Ripley that we talked about. Um, but you are about to do a last woman standing match with Nia Jax, who you have had <laughs> quite, quite, quite the history with. And I'm, you know, why Becky? Why? <laughs> have you ever known me to make the easy choice? No, <laughs> no, and and so look, there th- there's been so much history with Nia, just going back five years, but especially recently, ever since she's come back and haven't beaten her, and I need to prove it to myself that I can, and in the most brutal way possible. And I've been in a last woman standing match. It, it it is one of the most brutal matches that you can possibly have because you have to incapacitate your 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 opponent and so for me it doesn't seem like a hard choice it seems like the only choice because i'm not going to be able to move past and onto and onto this wrestlemania match knowing that i haven't defeated her yet i feel that i feel that i i'm I'm looking forward to it i i i'm hoping that you come out unscathed you know, it's it's probably not going to happen. It's the last woman standing match. So it's going to be brutal, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, you've had so many memorable moments and matches throughout your career that I've enjoyed. I, I was at the December 26th house show at MSG and your match was always stark was like it, incredible. Like, I, I love that match. And for it being a house show, not televised, it felt like y'all treated it as if it was main eventing that night. When you look over, you, when you look back at your career and all the moments and matches that you've had, w- what are some of your favorite matches, moments, and opponents? Um, gosh, I suppose they they are very like Zoe Stark is up there. I lo- I love wrestling with her. I uh, 
I loved that boss count anywhere match that we had recently. Um, and then and then one of my favorite matches is is myself and Bianca at WrestleMania 38, and uh, being able to repay that moment from from SummerSlam the year previous, um, and that whole storyline going into it was uh was one of my favorites and then getting to work with lita even though that storyline was so short that was one of one of my favorites i mean you're gonna hear that me being a heel was probably (laughs) a a lot of my favorite stuff happened happened during during that period but then you know main eventing wrestlemania was obviously incredible but then my first wrestlemania wrestlemania 32 and that triple threat with me charlotte and sasha so there's been there's been a lot of a lot of very special moments Mm -hmm. uh i really enjoyed my time in nxt i really enjoy just working with with somebody who hasn't um been in those positions in general that like match that i had with zia lee on raw where you know she had never really gotten I don't think she'd ever had a two segment match before and uh, seeing her rise to the occasion, stuff like that. I, I, I really love. Absolutely. Um, Becky, you are a WrestleMania main eventer and a WrestleMania main event winner, a Royal Rumble winner, an elimination chamber winner, a multi-time women's champion. Like your, your resume is incredibly stacked. Is there anything in the WWE that you haven't accomplished yet that you would still like to accomplish? Um, I'm sure there are things, right? There are things that would be nice to accomplish. I don't think that's what, not that I don't think, that's just not what drives me anymore, you know? Um, it's It's not that first time ever. It's not that, Oh, I need to win this match, or I need to win that match, or I need to be an uh, insert number time champion. It's uh, it's it's telling the best stories and getting the best reaction out of the crowd, and that's what drives me now more than ever. And that's that's even harder than just going after that that one thing because it's every week it's it's how do we tell the best story how do we get the people talking about this how do we get them engaged and and uh and and so so that's and that and that's what continues to to drive me because that's what this is all about you know at the end of the day the accolades and all of those things are are nice but it's the telling stories that really stand the test of time Absolutely. And that's and that that's what us fans get most invested in. I think, you know, the first time ever is, like you said, are awesome. The multi multiple championships are awesome. But the thing that keeps us watching week to week is the stories. And so the intention that you put into telling these these riveting things that people can get immersed in emotionally um, is definitely one of the best aspects of uh, of your character. Uh, an- another really great aspect of your character is the way that your style has evolved over over the last few years. Um, you are you are definitely walking into the arenas looking like big time Bex. Um, recently, you made a <laughs> during a promo. You talked about the hats that you're wearing now. What 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 went behind the decision to start wearing hats? Oh, uh, wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding kind of um no i just i just wear a lot of hats in my in my day-to-day life and uh gosh i i, I just got this black the one that i was wearing on tv and colby kept calling it my kendall roy hat if you watch the <laughs> session i i've seen episodes i haven't like watched it like fully through but i've seen episodes oh man you gotta watch it you just gotta watch it it's it's so great it's so great but kendall roy is a character in that he's the son of logan roy the you know the media mogul and uh and like it's like my incognito kendall roy hat and uh, i just loved it i just loved it and then it just made its way on tv and then somebody was like i really like you wearing a hat and i was like all right the hat stays (laughs) and then i was like maybe the audience let's ask the audience if they like it Maybe they'll mm-hmm. like it. 
They liked it. It's 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 working. It's 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 a good look. It definitely fits you. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. I like wearing hats. You know, um, but hats are just great. You know, you have a bad yeah. hair day, you stick one on. Your face ain't looking right. You stick one on. There's mm-hmm. just a multitude of hats to match every move. I love a good hat. Yeah. Now you you can't see me right now, but I'm I'm wearing a hat. Um, I'm bald, and so whenever I need to get a haircut, hats hats save me. So I, I definitely agree with with the hat love that you have. Um, you 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 mentioned Colby, aka Seth Rollins, and Seth freaking Rollins. I'm I'm messing up. I'm sorry, but <laughs> he's Seth freaking Rollins has been on the run of a lifetime. Um, currently the world heavyweight champion, the, the inaugural world heavyweight champion. Now the title has been revived and, um, you know, he's had people coming at him all year, uh, really great matches that he's had. And you two have a beautiful marriage that I, I, I try not to stand too many things, but I definitely stand, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch marriage. How have you seen him grown? How have you seen him grow over the course of your relationship, especially, uh, with fatherhood being thrown into the mix? But he's such a good dad. He's annoyingly good at everything. That one's not annoying. That's great. I'm just very grateful for that. But he's just so good at everything. Like you said that he's had the run of a lifetime. I'm like, yeah, his whole lifetime has been a run. You know, like mm. he's just his career is just the run of a lifetime. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like he's just great. He is always great everything that he does is great you give him anything and he just makes it gold he's like he's he is a rare talent in 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 that regard and he doesn't always get given the greatest stuff but he Mm -hmm. makes it the best he possibly can and the best he possibly can is always great and uh, seeing him as a father, he's just, he's amazing. He's amazing because I just, I always say this, I go, my next book is just, I'm just going to get it down on paper how great I think he is. I'm just, that's going <laughs> to be my next book. I'll just write a whole book about it because I could go on. Like I could go on in various chapters because when you see him backstage, he is such a leader. And he has a way of thinking about the business where because we're so close to it, we can we can kind of sometimes take things personally, you know, like this is this. They they give us a storyline and we're like, what? I would never, you know, and he always just takes a step back and he looks at things very calmly and he looks at it from a business perspective and then he just runs with it and he makes it awesome. And then he is there for everybody to bounce ideas off. Like if you go to a live event or or even at TV, he's always sitting by the monitor, watching everybody's matches. If people want help, he's there to just give them nuggets of wisdom that will help them improve tenfold. He's been able to help me so much um, and be an incredible sounding board. And then, of course, he can reinvent himself like nobody else. And and then on top of that, he's he's just this amazing father who's so patient and so good and so so calm and um is constantly teaching her different things and playing with her. And like it's funny because he went from um from not even being sure that he wants kids to now he's like he's he's the playground's father like you bring <laughs> you bring rude to the playground and all of a sudden colby is just the zombie that is chasing everybody and all the kids are coming up to him climbing on not even because they know who he is but just because he's like the fun dad it's 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 great to see i love that and i, I love the passion that you speak about him with and the passion that you both share in the WWE it's 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 quite literally a match made in heaven um and speaking of matches I am so looking forward to your match at WrestleMania 40 I will be in the building I cannot wait to to see you and Rhea go at it for the first time in a few years I can't wait to read your book can't wait to see everything else that you're going to accomplish um throughout your career and I just want to thank you for being the character that you've been that I can invest in for years and just be every time you, your entrance music hits like 
I, I get I get hyped because I know Becky's going to create a moment. Um, and I'm I'm so thankful for you giving me your time. Ah, uh, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Baby girl, baby girl, how you feeling? I've been out in the world, staying busy, taking 